I'm Gordon Dammer, and this is Nets Post Game Plus on YesNetwork.com. On Saturday afternoon, the Nets were in Chicago, opening up a set of games on three straight days by facing off against the Eastern Conference leading Bulls. There had been some rumors about Brooke Lopez possibly making his season debut. He'd have to wait one more game. In the meantime, his teammates raced out to a surprising 24-5 lead out of the gate and never looked back. The Yankees batting practice today driven by Audi. The clash of first-place teams continues in D.C. today with Game 2 between the Yankees and the Nationals. Well, last night, it was Phil Hughes who took the mound, looking to continue his recent run of great pitching. He was opposed by lefty Gio Gonzalez. who's had major problems with the Yankees in the past while he was with Oakland. Gonzalez kept the Yankees fairly quiet. But once he was gone, they made big noise against the Washington bullpen. Well, today, the Yankees will look to build on that advantage when they take on 26-year-old right-hander Jordan Zimmerman, a pitcher who has never faced the Yankees before. The Yanks will counter with Andy Pettit, who has a history with only a couple of the hitters on the Nationals roster. And welcome back once more here on Yankees batting practice today. Today, presented by Audi. During the Yankees' recent hot streak, the bullpen has been a big reason for their success. The relief core got even deeper last night when David Robertson returned from injury. And I'm Gordon Damer, and welcome to Yankees batting practice today, driven by Audi. Tonight, the Yankees open up a three-game interleague series in the Bronx with the Braves, who the Yankees swept on the road last week. A trio of wins over Atlanta make up one-third of the Yankees' current nine-game winning streak. It's their longest streak since their championship season of 2009, and all nine wins have come against teams with winning records. That's the first time they've done that in franchise history. We're here on Yankees batting practice today, driven by Audi. The Yankees' starting pitching has been terrific in June, recording 11 wins and putting up an ERA of 1.97. The rotation's highest individual ERA this month actually belongs to its ace, CC Sabathia. Last night, the pitching matchup this evening is a re Pete from the one that took place when the Yankees were in Atlanta last week with a pair of veteran right-handers on my nine, Hiroki Kuroda and Tim Hudson. While heading into last night's ball game, Derek Jeter was riding an eight-game hitting streak that included four multi-hit games. He kept things going with his bat in the win over Atlanta. He also made some noise with the glove. Of course, it was bottom five. Yanks were trailing at the time. Two on. Jeter delivering the two-out single off Mike Miner. That would put the Yanks up 3-2 at that point. Top of the seventh, though. Jeter also doing it in the field off the hot shot by Michael Bourne. Jeter makes the diving stop, flips to second for the inning ending force out. Bottom seven, another big hit for Jeter there. Adds the Yankee lead with an RBI single, his second game this year with three ribbies. That's going to finish up Yankees batting practice today, driven by Audi. Up next, is Bob Lorenz, Jack Curry, and Meredith Morakovitz with the pregame show. For now, I'm Gordon Damer saying enjoy the rest of our coverage on tonight's My Nine game between the Braves and the Yankees. Well, the Yankees, after getting a game one win behind their ace on the mound in CC Sabathia, turned to the winningest pitcher in postseason history in game number two in Andy Pettit. Pettit 26 and 7 in his career against the Orioles, 16 and 2 at Camden Yards. But while he did have a good game against the Orioles' tough lineup, it was 26-year-old Baltimore rookie Wei Yan Chen who was just a little bit better as the Orioles picked up a winning game too, 3 to 2. Pettit retired the first eight batters he faced before finally running into some trouble in the third. And Dino and McLeod singled to center. J.J. Hardy walked before Chris Davis put the Orioles on the board. So as you heard, the Yankees getting ready for game three as they return to the Bronx to face off against the Orioles with this division series tied at a game apiece. Taking a look at the pitching matchup, the Yankees will turn to perhaps their best starter over the second half in Hiroki Kuroda. Kuroda did his best work in the Bronx this season with an ERA of 2.72 and teams hitting under 220 against him. Miguel Gonzalez made two starts against the Yankees. He won both, allowing four runs in 13 and two-thirds innings. He also compiled an impressive 17 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. Gordon Damer with you here on YesNetwork.com. After their big win over the Packers, the Giants now move on to Sunday's NFC Championship game. Tom Coughlin and the G Men have already faced the Niners once this season, and they're getting ready for the task at hand. Now, welcome to YesNetwork.com, where you can get exclusive content all season long from This Week in Football, presented by Geico. Obviously, the topic for this week is the Jets as they face off against the Steelers in the AFC Championship game. Of course, Jets with a win against Pittsburgh 
Back in the regular season, is that going to carry any weight this time around? There? Well, one of the big differences, <laughs> at least in terms of personnel, is concerned. When the Jets beat the Steelers, there was no Troy Polamalu. There is going to be Troy Polamalu this week. Now, who knows how much he's healthy at this point. He's probably not 100%, but is that going to have a big impact on Sunday? The Pro Bowl should be Revis versus everybody. <laughs> well, maybe we, now we're going to figure out what we want for lunch because, uh, you know, we've already come to Revis over Palomalo, so now we'll on to more important things. And welcome to YesNetwork.com. I am Gordon Damer, Fantasy Gamer, as we get you ready for Week 11 in fantasy football. Do not lose heart at this point of your season. If your team's struggling a little bit, there's always time to turn it around. Generally, in large leagues, things can turn around very quickly with just a simple win, and we're here to help you get that win this week. We're standing by here with uh, Eric Hensky. Eric, you've served a lot of different roles on your different travels through the different teams, but this year, a new role, Fantasy Football League Commissioner. <laughs> going to do it for now on Yankees On Demand, presented by AT&T's Postseason Rewind. Remember to keep it locked in right here throughout the Yankees' run through October as the chase for another World Series title continues.